The New York Times gave readers a glimpse into Mitt Romney's La Jolla vacation home. The front page of the Times home section details what it's like to live next to the Romneys and what the house itself is like. On paper, the house sounds luxurious. It is 3,000 square feet with vaulted ceilings, five bathrooms, and a 20-yard lap pool and jacuzzi shaded by a Tory pine, a wraparound second-level deck, and a lawn that slopes down to the ocean, which is actually a lot like Sam Stein's house, but you're getting <laughs> off point. But those who have been inside say it needs work also. A lot like I'm just yeah. kidding. The new house, by contrast, will be 11,000 square feet with a split level four car garage equipped with an elevator to ferry cars up and down. Can I call Bull on this for a second? You, you, you've been mentioning you want to call Bull. I want to so call Bull, call Bull on, on right. both the substance of the story and the way the New York Times dealt with it. And I'm a New York Times subscriber and I rely on that paper. It's one of the best sort of centers of journalism in, in the country. But what they've done here is taken a campaign reporter who covers the campaign with a really thin, silly story, and then put it in the home section to as if that means they're not going at him. If I worked on a campaign or if I was with the Romney people, I'd be livid. This is not a home and garden section story. This is an attempt to draw connections, implicit or otherwise, between his personal wealth and his candidacy. And it's a silly attempt, but if they want to do it, they should do it either in the opinion section or in a news story about whether his wealth matters. So they're hiding the ball in the home section. Then number two on the substance, I don't really care how much money Mitt Romney has. I think it's problematic that he wants to take millionaires and give them 15% tax rates that are lower than everyone on capital gains, and I think that's a policy issue. But if he were broke and wanted to do that, I would still have a problem with it. So I think this has got two strikes on it and probably shouldn't have run. I think what Michael was really writing about was not a kind of cheap political attack on the Romney's wealth, but this tension, right, between your real life and your candidacy and how you're supposed to exist in a normal residential but way in the middle of a political campaign. Jody, in, to Ari's point, it is a political story, and having it in the home section, I think, is pretty perhaps a way to seek cover, a smoke screen, if you will. In the article, not only did they talk about the Romney's wealth, but also his position on gay marriage uh, and, and Romney's uh, habits to stop folks smoking marijuana and tell them not to do that in the neighborhood. So one thing we love about New York Times readers is their unquenched desire to re-edit the New York Times. <laughs> one of the things we hear very frequently is, how could this have been at the top of A1? It should have been below the fold. Or this story should have, was in this section, but it should have been in that Jody, section. It's, it's, it's because not, we care. It's, it, it's because we care. And we love that. But seriously, I wouldn't waste that much time discussing which section it was I in. Think I think it's totally valid to the question about the placement of the piece in the in the uh, paper. I think that's a, it, our brings up a valuable point. This is a political story. It was put in the home section. I don't think it's uh, in By terms the of substance. Reporter. Yeah, but it, the, I mean, it's fine to read about it. It's a very entertaining tell. story, but it is clearly a political story. But in the end, I can't question the story because Mike Barbaro did it, and he is a high school classmate of mine, and he can do no. <laughs> wrong in my book.